Now on 18 Eyewitness News. The KKK will be able to pass out their literature in Deloge. Three Rivers College will start two building projects this spring. And the 27th Annual Ag Expo returns to Poplar Bluff in three weeks. All of these stories and what about the weather? We saw some snow. Will there be any more snow in the forecast? I'll give you all the details coming up in your Storm Tracker weather forecast. Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello everybody and thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins. We'll get to the weather in just a minute, but here's the top stories we're working on for you at this hour. A Ku Klux Klan group will be able to pass out literature in Deloge. A federal judge has ruled that the traditionalist American Knights of the KKK would likely win challenge to a Deloge ordinance banning people from soliciting in the streets and issues a temporary injunction blocking the city from using the ordinance to prohibit the Klan from passing out handbills. When ACLU attorney Grant Doty spoke to 18 Eyewitness News, he said his client had to step into the street to distribute his message. What he's done in other cities, he's done in Cape Girardeau, he's done in other cities is he, he goes to cars and he puts the leaflets underneath people's windshield, which he has a constitutional right to do. In order for him to do that, he's got to step in the street to do that. And the city has, in effect, said he, he can't. You know, he cannot step into the streets if he's, you know, articulating his message. Now, prior to last week's injunction, Doty said the ACLU had overcome similar objections. We sued Cape Girardeau in federal court, uh, and uh, Cape Girardeau lost. They ended up entering into a consent judgment saying that their ordinance was, in fact, unconstitutional. Uh, we challenged the city of Arnold, and the city of Arnold backed down on their ordinance had tried to do with the leafleting of cars. Deloge officials have been quoted as saying their ordinance, passed back in 1999, was meant to prevent people from going into the streets to solicit funds from drivers. Well, now Dustin Kopp is here, and Dustin, we have got a wintry mix of weather ahead, don't we? Well, Fred, we saw some snow today, and we're going to continue to see that off and on the rest of this evening. Let's take a look at your current conditions outside right now. We're seeing temperatures in the low 30s, 33 in Festus and St. Genevieve, Fredertown and Ironton, 34, 35 in Piedmont, 33 right now in Van Buren. Snow showers off and on the rest of this evening, 32 degrees at 7 p.m., 31 by 9 by midnight, a temperature of 29. Will we see any snow for your Tuesday? I'll let you know coming up later in weather. A number of Farmington teachers and district personnel had ideas to enrich students' educational experience, but it could not be funded through the budget process. Dr. Natalie Thomas tells 18 Eyewitness News that a partnership has been bridging that gap. Um, through the Education Foundation, um, many individuals wanted to be able to support projects that teachers or other staff people have that are valuable but are not necessarily a part of the district's formal curriculum. And so um, the Education Foundation provided some funds directly to the Community Teachers Association. Dr. Thomas says the many grants funded from 40 different projects are helping. The majority are teachers, but we have some other food service staff people and other professionals um, that proposed projects for their classrooms that will be able to be funded. Things like gardening centers, uh, opportunity to have some additional books on tape, uh, some additional uh, electronic readers because they're much cooler right now than having books. Dr. Thomas says the goal of all of these projects is to enhance the students' experience in the classroom. Well, the phenomenal growth of Three Rivers College in Poplar Bluff has created its own set of problems, such as turning away students for a lack of class space. Dr. Devin Stevenson told 18 Eyewitness News that the biggest challenge facing the school is construction. Trustees recently approved a $5.4 million bond sale to build a 38-acre eastern campus in Sykeston and a new classroom building on the Poplar Bluff campus. Dr. Stevenson hopes to break ground sometime this spring. I think our greatest challenge is to uh, get those uh, buildings up out of the ground uh, and, and moving ahead uh, rapidly. We want to break ground on the new building here on the main campus 
and the one in Sykeston um, sometime in April. Dr. Stevenson says they've also received funding from the State Emergency Management Agency to build safe rooms. We have obtained over $9 million in SEMA money uh, to do construction, uh, and it's been timed just perfect so that the SEMA uh, tornado rooms that will be built resident within the, the new facilities that we're building. The bond sale is part of the Changing Lives, Building Futures major gifts campaign that was organized by the Three Rivers Endowment Trust. Mineral Area College's new webpage dedicated to alumni and friends is online. Director of Development and Alumni Julia Dill tells 18 Eyewitness News what the new page offers. To summarize, it has a lot of different features, but online donations as well as a career center for alumni to look for different careers and post their resumes, as well as news and events from across campus. Julia says it took about two years to create that web page. Uh, I would say it was definitely an extensive process. We had to research what would be the, the best product for us and then about two years of just getting, getting all of our plans in order and uh, researching the, the, the needs of our alumni and making sure that we, we filled them. You can visit the new website by going to Mac's webpage and clicking the link or just click this story on our website, kdkz18.com. And when we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, one of the biggest farm trade shows returns next month to Poplar Bluff. That story coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. For 15 years, Heartland Furniture and Appliance has been the leader in price for restonic bedding. Whirlpool built Crossley appliances, Frigidaire appliances, sofa sets, recliners, accent furniture, and White's metal detectors. Same day delivery with no waiting. We are fast becoming this area's leader in the home furnishing and appliance business. Need a little cash? Payday loans are available in each store. We'd love to have you come see us at one of our three locations on both sides of Main Street in Piedmont, Business 60 in Dexter, and next to Current River Ford in Donovan. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, 223-3200. How can heat also be cool? When it comes from targeted induction technology, which uses electromagnetic waves to quick heat your pan, boiling up to 40% faster, while the surface around it stays perfectly cool to the touch. It's faster, hotter, and, well, cooler. Hi, Bob Seabaugh at Seabaugh Furniture and Appliance. Come and see this and other great features and benefits that will amaze you. Now on sale at Seabaugh Furniture and Appliance in downtown Fredericktown. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. 18 Eyewitness News continues. One of the largest farm trade shows in the region, the 27th Annual Ag Expo, is just three weeks away. County Program Director for the Butler County University of Missouri Extension Center, Phyllis Flanagan, tells 18 Eyewitness News this year's expo will feature 118 exhibits plus a whole lot more. For example, our private applicator training Friday afternoon from 2 to 5. We'll have like a duck calling contest, milking contest, FFA tractor driving contest, old time auction. In addition, Phyllis says there will be events just for the kids. We've got a kids gardening adventure on Saturday morning, a youth safety education program on Saturday afternoon baking contest, ag photography. And Phyllis says the best part of the expo is that admission is free. The expo is set for January 18th and 19th at Poplar Bluff's Black River Coliseum. Last year, more than 12,000 people attended the event. Bollinger County voters will be asked in April to approve a bond issue to put the County Library, Archive and Extension Center into a brand new building. Library Director Eva Dunn told 18 Eyewitness News that the new facility will protect their resources. 
present library is in the flood zone and it's flooded three times in the last 20 years. And the archive and extension are in a tiny building that they've been out of room now for the past five years. So it will give us a basically a countywide resource center. Eva says the new larger building would allow both the library and extension center to offer more services. We actually have purchased a location uh, that's on a hill, <laughs> well out of the flood zone, and um, we have worked with architects on a basic design and, and plan uh, that, that helped us get ready to talk to the voters. Eva points out the tax is estimated at 20 cents per $100 of assessed valuation and will end when the bonds are paid off. Although the library board hasn't voted on the project's final plans, it's expected to cost around five to six million dollars. Well, as cell phone technology improves, so has the way to get information distributed. The Missouri State Highway Patrol says effective today, the new wireless emergency alerts are replacing the wireless Amber Alert a program. David Diggs of the CTIA, the Wireless Foundation, tells 18 Eyewitness News under the old system, users had to tell the system their location and the messages were sent one by one. Diggs says the wireless emergency alerts are a step forward because alerts are sent to everyone in a geographic area. For example, looking at the weather uh, service, they have the ability uh, to draw a, uh, a polygon, you know, just sort of outline, all right, we need everyone in this area to be warned that there's a tornado coming. And the um, wireless emergency alerts platform allows those messages to be sent ev to everyone who's in that coverage area. Dig says just as important, everyone gets the information at the same time. If you did it the conventional way, even the fastest network, there could be a significant lag between the first person to get the alert and the last. That's solved with wireless emergency alerts. So it's a big improvement to the way this kind of alert can be sent. Now, if you'd like more information about wireless emergency alerts as well as Amber Alerts, just click this story at our website, kdkz18.com. Is there going to be snow for your Tuesday? I'll let you know. We'll be right back. When someone comes in a mineral area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. With extended hours, let the UPS store pack and ship your gifts. Hi, I'm Steve from the UPS store in Farmington, Missouri. Me and my staff would like to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. Looking at weather headlines for southeast Missouri. We're going to see the snow in late tonight, a few inches possible. The further north you go, You'll see more, especially around the uh, Jefferson City area. They're seeing uh, snowfall ranges from two to three, maybe even four inches. Some areas even more than that. Cold air welcomes in the new year as well. Currently here in southeast Missouri, temperatures are on the cold side. 33 in Festus as well as in St. Genevieve and Cape Girardeau. 35 in Piedmont and Poplar Bluff. 34 right now in Ellington. It's currently 33 out there. 
under a snowy sky. Feels like 30 out there. Current dew point 29 with 92% humidity and the southeast wind at 3 miles per hour. Going through the day on your Tuesday, the snow finally pushes off to the east. This cold front pushes off to the east as well, giving us some colder air here in southeast Missouri. 24 for your overnight low. Temperatures in the 20s for most areas throughout southeast Missouri. Further south you go where we saw more rain today. We'll see warmer temperatures for your overnight like in Cape Girardeau at 34, 32 in Poplar Bluff, and 27 in Van Buren. The snow will finally end by tomorrow morning, and then we'll see a partly sunny sky tomorrow afternoon. 28 degrees, maybe closer to 30 degrees, 31 in Ironton, 33 in Piedmont, and 35 in Poplar Bluff. Next several days look like this. On your Wednesday, 29 degrees under a partly sunny sky, partly sunny in 25 on Thursday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're seeing mostly sunny skies, but... On Friday, 29 degrees, 35 both Saturday and Sunday, partly sunny on Tuesday with a high around 46. So nothing right now looks like we'll see any moisture for the next several days. And a look at our weekend forecast here in southeast Missouri. Both Saturday and Sunday look the same, mostly sunny, high of 35 and a low of 16. That is Jackie the Storm Tracker weather forecast. More details located at kdkz18.com. Just click on the weather tab. Coming up in today's two-minute tour of Missouri, the Mississippi River gets another boost. Judges worry about camera phones in the courtroom, and a landmark school is demolished. Today's two-minute tour of Missouri starts on the Mississippi, where officials are trying to boost water levels once again. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has released more stored water at Carlisle Lake on the Kaskaskia River near St. Louis. Now, this is the second time the Corps has added water from the lake to boost Mississippi River levels. The Corps also suggests that its rock pinnacle removal efforts may soon begin to have an impact on the levels as well. Republicans who control the Missouri legislature plan to make another attempt at revising the state's workers' compensation laws. Republican lawmakers want to require people with occupational diseases, such as cancer caused by asbestos exposure, to file their claims for money through the workers' compensation process. The legislature passed a similar bill back in 2012, but it was vetoed by Governor Jay Nixon. Lawmakers returned to work on January 9th. Advances in cell phone technology are causing problems for some judges who are grappling with the question of whether the devices need to be banned entirely from courtrooms. Cameras are off limits in most courtrooms, but decisions on whether to allow cell phones are generally left up to judges. One of the main concerns about courtroom photography is that jurors or witnesses in criminal cases could be publicly identified, opening them up to threats or intimidation. Judges say it might be time to reconsider bans on cell phones in the courtrooms, if not entire courthouses, to resolve that issue. Three barrels recently uncovered in West St. Louis County are drumming up bitter memories and raising new concerns about tainted land. The barrels filled with paint waste have been buried for decades in a ravine on the outskirts of Wildwood. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency hauled them away in early December, along with about 1,500 cubic yards of soil. For some residents, the cleanup proves the EPA is going out of its way to alleviate concerns. Others wonder how the barrels were missed in the first place and worry about what remains buried. And demolition began Friday on a Cape Girardeau school listed as one of Missouri's 10 most endangered historic places. That's the old Jefferson School on Jefferson Avenue in Cape. The city's oldest multi-room schoolhouse was condemned in 2011, and city leaders struck down a plan back in October to bring it up to code. The building is also on the National Registration of Historic Places as the last segregated school for black students in Cape Girardeau. And that's your two-minute tour of Missouri for today. Coming up in today's Your Life segment on 18 Eyewitness News, how to kick off the new year with your best foot forward at home. The first of a two-part series on today's Focus on the Family. 
I'm Stacey Johnson. If you want to get in better physical shape, you might find yourself with complicated equipment. But if you want to get yourself in better financial shape, hey, all you need is a spending plan. And I'm going to help you get one. Just ahead on Money Talks News. Your health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy of Deloge, where caring for you and about you is our business. From taking time to explain your medication, offering a caring touch to a full line of medical equipment, supplies, and diabetic shoes. We'll help you understand your options and assist you with Medicare drug plan enrollment with a comfortable waiting area, convenient drive through or free delivery. Caring for our neighbors is our business. Your locally owned Parkland Health Mark Pharmacy just off of Highway 67 at the Deloge exit. No better time than New Year's to make some helpful changes in your family life. And one area a lot of us can use some help with is organization. Dr. Bill Meyer comes to the rescue in his first segment of this special two-part Focus on the Family. There can be chaos everywhere. People wake up late, uh, they go downstairs, someone forgot to pick up groceries, there's no milk for breakfast, people are crabby. Does that sound like a weekday morning in your home? You know, it starts out from the moment your alarm clock goes off, you're making decisions, a ton of decisions every day that each mom faces. A new year is a great time for a fresh start. So we spent some time with Carrie Pemberton, a mom who's so on top of things, she's actually become a professional organizer. Carrie knows all about what disorganization does to a family. I know when things feel disorganized that I am shorter tempered with my children. Um, I have less time to do fun things if we're spending time looking for something that we need to go to soccer or something like that. Carrie says every household has a family manager, and that's usually the mom. But whoever's in charge of day-to-day -day activities, there are a number of key areas in which organization is important, including time and scheduling. You know what I see a lot of families do that is a mistake is have more than one calendar. Our family uses a color-coded calendar that's on the computer. The kids are the orange color. The blue is my business appointments, green are my personal appointments. In the conclusion of this two-part series, we'll have tips on those other categories of organization that can make or break your family life. In Carrie's house, even the kids understand. It really helps the family to get things done and to stay on track with things so that we don't lose things that are important. For Focus on the Family, I'm Dr. Bill Meyer. For more valuable information on life's issues, relationships, and family, visit our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Focus on the Family link. Resolutions are full of ways to improve our lives. All this week, money expert Stacy Johnson shows us some simple ways to accomplish those goals. One of the most common resolutions, making a budget and sticking to it. The most popular New Year's resolutions revolve around getting in better physical shape and getting in better financial shape. But whether it's body or bank account, if you've failed at resolutions in the past, it's probably because you skipped at least one of three critical steps. Step one is to set a goal. Maybe you want to buy a house, a car, maybe pay off your credit cards. You have to have a specific goal. How much money? By exactly when? And that goal has to be super important. If it's not, you're not going to get there. Step two, track your progress. When it comes to money, the way to do that is a spending plan, also known as a budget. All you're doing is tracking money coming in, money going out, and how much you're putting towards your goal. There's tons of free technology out there that makes it easy. Step three, stay on top of it. Put reminders everywhere and keep visualizing your goal. Keep reviewing your progress by studying your spending plan. If that goal is important to you, you're going to find a way to achieve it. Bottom line, the way to stay in shape, whether it's physical or financial, is to set a goal, track your progress, and use tools that will help. I've got more information and links right here at MoneyTalksNews.com. Just do a search for 2013 resolutions. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. And as Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to our website, kdkz18.com, and clicking on the Money Talks link under the Lifestyles menu. And coming up in sports, Farmington and Park Hills will meet tonight in the Christmas Tournament Championship game. The Rams go down swinging to the Seattle Seahawks, and Mizzou is expected to drop in the polls after losing to UCLA. It's all coming up here in sports.
Tips to make you money delivered daily. The totally free Money Talks newsletter. Sign up now and get my money makeover video, a $50 value, as my gift. MoneyTalksNews.com Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, go one. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News. The fifth seed at Farmington Black Knights will meet the seventh seed Park Hill Central Rebels on the hardwood tonight in the championship game of the Central Christmas Tournament. In Sunday's action, Farmington tamed the West County Bulldogs a final of 64-47, while Central slayed the DeSoto Dragons 65-50. Coverage of the Central Christmas Tournament championship game starts tonight at 9 p.m. You can listen to the game on Froggy96, froggy96online.com, or watch the games live in sparkling crystal clear resolution at kdkz18.com. The Rams went down swinging Sunday, but went down nonetheless. Losing by seven points with less than a minute to play, quarterback Sam Bradford threw to Austin Pettis, who was open in the end zone. But Seattle cornerback Richard Sherman dropped into coverage for his eighth interception of the season. Sherman's pick with 26 seconds to play gave Seattle a 20-13 victory on Sunday. St. Louis will finish the 2012 season with a record of 7-8-1. And, and a feeling that Coach Jeff Fisher has turned the team around. Mizzou had its chances against UCLA on Friday night, leading by nine points with four minutes left in regulation and by two points in overtime. But the Tigers just couldn't close it out. Phil Pressey missed a three-pointer with five seconds to go in OT before Lawrence Bowers grabbed the rebound, and then he missed a three-pointer right in front of the Tigers' bench. As time expired, the Tigers lost 97-94. Pressey finished out with 19 points and a career-high 19 assists in the game. The Cardinals are expecting free agent Kyle Loesch who was one of their most consistent pitchers in 2012, to sign with a new team in the next few weeks. In allowing Loesch to go, the Cardinals made room for their young, talented pitchers. Lance Lynn stepped into a starter's role after Chris Carpenter went down and became an 18-game winning All-Star. Joe Kelly was promoted when Jaime Garcia got hurt and shined in both starting and relief appearances. A surprise call-up from AA, Trevor Rosenthal, was dominating in a pen by the end of the season, hitting 99 and higher on the radar gun. This pitching depth sets the Cardinals up quite well for long term. And that's today in sports. Fred and Dustin, guys, it's back to you. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Looking at your forecast for the rest of this evening. We're going to see off and on snow showers throughout the evening. 32 degrees at 7 p.m., 31 by 9 and by midnight, a temperature of 29. That does it for 18 Eyewitness News. We wish you a happy new year. It's almost that time. A couple more hours and the new year will be here. If you're going out and about, stay safe. And be smart about your decisions tonight. From all of us here at the Dawkins Broadcast Group and 18 Eyewitness News, hope you have a good night. Do you see news happening in your neighborhood? Email us at news at kdkz.tv. Coming up tonight on KDKZ Channel 18.